disgusted. The source of this meat, they need fast growing cells, replicating cells, just like when you have a farm that makes fruit from a tree. You don't want to plant a new tree every week. You want a tree that gives you a lot of fruit. And this is what they're trying to do with meat. And so what do they find? Well, there's something called an immortalized cell, also known as a HeLa cell. HeLa after Henrietta Lacks, who sometime in the 1950s had cervical cancer, and they removed her cancer cells, put them in a petri dish to see how long would they continue replicating, and they're still replicating today. So if you've already started to read in between the lines, you may guess where I'm going with this, that they realize the best source for fast replicating cells to make lab-grown meat that you're going to eat are cancer and pre-cancer cells. That means taking cancerous and pre-cancerous cells, literally, putting them as the base and having those replicate to continue as a fast as possible pace, produce the meat that you're going to eat. This machine is 3D printing steak. The goal is to create a piece of meat without killing a cow. And this Israeli startup is one of the dozens of companies racing to perfect the process. It turns out that cows aren't necessarily the most efficient way of making beef. Still, for many scientists, the holy grail is to not just imitate meat, but actually make it. Back in 2013, professor and scientist Mark Post unveiled the first lab-grown burger at a live tasting in London. This one patty cost over $325,000 to make. It's close to meat. It's not that juicy, but the consistency is perfect. I think that was kind of the one of those like pivotal moments where you're like, oh, this could be a thing. But it wasn't until 2020 that funding for lab-grown food really started to pour in. With some startups drawing high-profile investments from the likes of Bill Gates and even traditional meat companies. It's like everyone wants to hop on that bandwagon. Here's how it works. Look at this perfectly marbled steak. The white stuff is fat. That gives it flavor. The pink stuff is muscle. That's for protein. Scientists had to figure out how to recreate both. First, they take stem cells from a cow and then grow them in a lab. That means that we're replacing the body of the animal with what's called a bioreactor. Getting the cells to grow under these conditions is no easy task. Usually cells are attached to something. They grow in a petri dish or flasks and they want to attach to something. Here, the cells grow suspended in a liquid where they divide roughly once a day. Then scientists move the mass of cells to the tissue engineering lab, where they make something called bioinks. This is the beginning of the bioprinting stage. The inks that we're using actually contain the cells that we've been growing in the labs previously. There's one for muscle and one for fat. They're fed through these nozzles, and technicians can customize how much of each goes into the steak. You can print any structure that you're able to design. So you upload a, a file to the printer, and you can present a steak of, of pretty much any size and also any proportions. You can't put a patent on growing and on raising a cow. You can go buy cattle right now. Right? You right. go buy eight cattle yep. and get a huge, actually I think in Texas it's only four, mm -hmm. and get massive tax write-off for it first. But you can produce your own cattle, you can have it butchered, and you can eat it yourself, or you can sell it to other people. All you got to do is make sure, you have to put it through the right processing to make sure that it's uh, uh, not going to hurt anybody. But you can pretty much do that all you want. This right here, mm -hmm. this fucking lab-grown meat, that is a patented process. And you can't do it unless you pay Bill Gates or whoever else owns this technology to use it third party. That's Strange. that's reason number one. Yeah. Reason number two is what I talk about all the time, and that's the king's deer, right? It's like a feudalistic principle where the good meat belongs to the aristocracy and the king, mm -hmm. right? The warden, the governor, whomever else, and you eat fucking bugs. That's what it is, right? <laughs> I want the high-quality protein. You get this lab-grown shit that's going to give you fucking cancer. And by the way, you got to pay us just to make the shit. Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, the one of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutation of the Aki, I'm pushing out the word and truth and sincerity. Just wanted to share that clip from companies like this, like Meat Tech, like Stakeholder, all right, of this so called cultured meat, the, this processed shit that they're giving us that's going to cause all types of hell and death. But just showing or giving you more info now on the the process of it how this shit it has a patent on it and everything okay and i'll get one scripture real quick just to, following up my last lesson all right let's get 
the book of John. All right. We can't bring this out enough. The book of John 8 and 8. All right. Uh, so like, yeah, only 18. Salakia. John 10 and 10, pardon me. All right, John 10 and 10 says, the thief, and these are the words of Yahweh Shai in the red letter. It says, the thief, all right, which we know is Esau, Edom, all right? Check your scriptures. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy okay and and he gives the contract to the lord that i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly all right and so this devil is the harbinger of death as opposed to the lord that he is the harbinger of life all right he's the author of life okay he, the heavenly father is, all, is also the author of death in the sense that he sanctions who lives and dies all right as it is written but the, when we're speaking of the thief Esau Edom who's appointed you're right to bring wickedness all right because the heavenly father is only just all right when when it comes to theft when, when it comes to destroying all right when it comes to killing that that's this devil so all the the taking of these lands of all these farmlands being acquired or so-called acquired because they got taken you know from the North American Indian, so-called uh, the tribe of Gad, tribe of Reuben, all right, Issachar, and so forth. The, the our our lands were overtaken, okay, by this thief. And now, fast forward to the day, all his technology, his his weaponry of the sword, you know, the modern day weapons, uh, the, these these advancements like his nukes, and, and there and so forth, okay, they were created to destroy so he further steals all right further steals kills and destroys so with this technological investment of these printed meats all right it's not for anything good it's going to be for him to destroy all right so with that i just wanted to share that clip and give some follow-up info all praises to yahweh shalom